All right, thanks for staying with us. Wellness plays a vital role in preventing and managing chronic illnesses, reducing stress and anxiety level, enhances cognitive function, and boosting uh, productivity. It also fosters healthy relationships, promotes self-awareness, and motivates personal growth and development. We all know the importance of prioritizing wellness to maintain our physical and mental well-being, as well as nurturing a thriving and fulfilling life. Now, managing employees uh, through impactful leadership involves several key strategies and approaches that naturally should include wellness, but often do not. So tonight, we're asking how can we start to manage employees' wellness through impactful leadership? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. So, Chinilo, I want to bring in Tochi um, in a minute, but I just want to hear your thoughts. What do you think we can do to help <laughs> Hey, wellness in, in the workplace. See, I believe that so I've, I've had to lead certain teams in offices where I work, right? So this means that I interact with my subordinates and then with the management as well. So I'm sort of like that middle, middle person. person. And in several instances, the complaint from the, my subordinates is usually, tell Oga that they should start doing X, Y, Z. Tell the animal who is that, um, okay, you know, I understand, but maybe we don't have the financial capacity right now. We don't have the resources to provide such environment for you, you know, and things like that. And then I go back to management and I tell management, yeah, Chinelo, what are you talking about? Don't you know how much this is? Don't you? And I'm like, ah, okay, at this point, what do I do? So that's even going to be my first question to, to touch it this evening. But then I believe that mental wellness is a very crucial part of um, um, the work space or the work environment because that is what is going to actually help increase productivity. If morale is low, you are not going to be able to get the best from your employees. I mean, it's not rocket science, right? So I believe that mental wellness is very, very crucial and should be taken seriously. I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What are the examples of the things that the same you should go tell management? <laughs> you can't give us half, half gist and that, that make it, see the way I'm sus, I, I was sus, no. I was in suspense listening to you. Oh, yeah. I know, I not care about that. Should I mention, mention it? it. <laughs> you didn't mention the organization. <laughs> should I mention? Let us hear. Okay, so I mean, I will talk about the one that we actually implemented eventually. So we started doing this thing two times in a month. It's called TGIF. So we just have pizza, we have games, Jenga, you know. It just allows everybody to just express themselves freely and, you know, let's lose. And so everybody literally looks forward to Friday, not because it's the last day of the week and they're not coming to work on Saturday now, but because it will foster that team spirit and teamwork. You know, I don't think this TGIF thing, eh? I can't think it's not sustainable. Well, you don't have to do a lot. Mm. You know, honestly, at the end of the day, when we started drawing up the budget, it wasn't... And we did it, and everybody enjoyed it. And even my boss now saw it, to the point that he now even started joining us. Mm. Before, he would just carry his bag and go. But when he was like, these children are having a lot of fun doing these things. <laughs> it's like, we'll play games, you know, mimicking each other and those kind of things. We know, in fact, eh, at some point, we didn't know, the, so other people in the other departments, we didn't know their names until we started that TGIF. And then everybody now got to know. We just realized that the tension in the office reduced. It. Before, everybody's all... Mm. Even when you want to ask for a delivery, okay. you are like this. We shall do TJF. People like food. <sighs> that's, the, that's the easiest way to get to their house. Let me just tell you. They like food a lot. Where I work currently, right? They serve, they serve us breakfast. We, honestly, we get donuts and a cup of coffee. So, you know, you, are, you, are, you go to work in the morning and you're like, okay, I'm going to get a cup of coffee and donuts. So, try it. So, my first are start, start up. <laughs> Let me keep on emphasizing <laughs> that. <laughs> All right, Tochi is a lifestyle transformation coach with a mission to make fitness a lifestyle and a part of our culture. She is the founder of the Excited Living uh, Company, a wellness company with a mission to create awareness and education to help individuals, um, individuals live a wholesome experience. Now, the Excited Living Company teaches a, um, a seven-dimension to wellness approach. Tochi has worked with several women to transform their physical and mental well-being through her life coaching 
and fitness um, accountability program. She's very passionate and she's also a passionate writer and she runs a columnist for the Vanguard newspaper and she's a friend of the house and she has joined us live yeah, yeah. <laughs> in studio. Hi, Tochi. Hi, hi. You know, I heard you. I saw you nodding, nodding, nodding. You people, you people, you people, kill us. Kill us as entrepreneurs. You know, ah, uh, uh, what you know now? Well, ah, uh, we not go kill us. We, we will survive. We will yes, survive. But yeah. um, but I think I, I I get a lot of sense in what um um what's called um Chinelo just talked yeah, about. Yeah. The truth is, I'm a very introverted person. It's only when you see me on TV, you see me talk. Because I am naturally very into myself. Uh -huh. I can literally stay in my space for a very long time. Because I, um, I don't know how to do all the... Except if I... Probably you are my paddy, paddy, paddy. Uh -huh. Before you see me come out of that shell. So people tend to think that, you know, I'm very snobbish. You know, I'm very stuck up. It's, it, I see that a lot. So maybe things like a TJF will... Be, but I don't, I'm not. I'm not sure about that yet. I'll collect budget from you. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, um, Toshi, right? Um, we're talking managing employee wellness, yes. right? And for me, I think it's very, very critical because if an employee seems to be like wholesome and complete, right? You're very. It's very likely that your jobs, um, projects, or whatever it is that they are being um, assigned to do yeah. would not suffer. Um, but many a times I see that a lot of organizations, there's a lot happening. You hear cases of salaries being owed, you know, for months. You know, how do you expect these people to function? Um, you see cases of where you have an organization, there's no rest area. Um, you see cases where you see an organization and, you know, you just, the, the, the environment is quite hostile. You know, it's not just um, user friendly, you know as little as even the look and feel of the place can actually be depressing. So for me, um, space is very important to me. So that's mm -hmm. why I try as much as possible that for the spaces I stay long in, I try to make it very, yeah, con as conducive as possible. Because again, I want to, um, I can't think if, uh, if, if maybe I see chaos around right. the space. Right. But I see that a lot of employees don't really pay attention to this. Only very few companies. I remember when, I think it was either Google or Facebook that started it. It was Google. I think it was Google. They started doing the slip pods and all of that. Like They changed the entire structure. Even Facebook you know, also changed the entire structure. Mm -hmm. Google then now started having like bicycles where you in the, you know, because they have bigger like companies. Huge that, you know, yes. Like the whole of Ikeja can be a Google. Oops. Do you understand? Yes. So they have all of those resources. So they started, they started switching up a lot of their workspace. That's when you now see, and again, with the advent of FinTech or technology driven companies, you see a lot of creativity. So when you go into that space, right, you're able to think, right? But uh, so how do we start? Where do we start from? If you're an employer and, you know, you're, you're having this challenge where you see a lot of morale not being, you know, like yeah. top, top and all of that. Where do you start from in, in, in this wellness journey for your employees? Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> so the first thing I'd like to say is everything that we create, you know, starts with a mindset. And I feel like the mindset of many employers need to maybe adopt a different one. And I'll share what I mean. So when you see your employees as collaborative partners, it changes how you treat them. If you have that authoritative, I'm a boss, you are a staff attitude, you will treat them less than they should be treated. And I tell people, if the dreams that you have for your company cannot be achieved by you alone, then your staff clearly are very important people. So first of all, the mindset has to be collaborative. And how do you work your collaborators? There's respect, right? There is fair compensation. I think that's the first thing I will talk about, fair financial compensation. Are people getting what they are due? Um, many years ago when I worked in London, we used to be excited about working extra hours because we got paid more. Do you understand? So whilst I was tired and working extra three hours, I knew that, ah, that extra 50, 60 pounds, it will make so much sense. So you see how that kind of cancels out the potential stress that could come from that. So for me, employers must review if they are being financially fair to their team members, first of all. That financial fairness is a big part of how well a person is. We know that if your finances are together, there's a certain peace that you can live your life with. If a person struggles to come to the office due to high transportation, 
the, the day is already disrupted before they get to the office. You know, I work with a company currently, or I consulted for a company that when the subsidy was removed from petrol, the boss called an emergency meeting and said to everybody, write down the new transport fare that you are now paying. And you know what she did? She started to give them right. some, yes, just to cover that, at least the transport. Something you said earlier about if you don't have the financial capacity, what's the smallest thing you can do to make the lives of your employees easier? Especially if the company is making money. Do you understand? So she did that meeting, and people were saying extra 500, extra 1,000. And she's put that in the budget for the next one year for them. Hmm. As little as that, I know what happened to them. Can I go work for her? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to be a We can speak in the DM. <laughs> you know, that little, hmm. be, that behavior reinforced that this person cares for me. She might not give me money to meet up my, sal my rent or more money for food, but there's something she has picked up and has decided to take care of in that moment. So for me, the first thing is financial, fair financial compensation. We know what is happening in Nigeria. Things have changed. And companies have adjusted their prices up. But the salary of the, the staff that are still coming with the transport that has gone up hasn't changed. Is that a fair conversation. Do you understand? I've gone to restaurants where in January I paid a particular amount. I'm paying about 25-30% more. You've increased to adjust to the changes, but your salaries, or not even salaries, but there's been no adjustment for those that come every single day to make sure your business, business is running. Hmm. So I think the first thing, collaborative mindset. My staff, my staff are my team members. They are part of, they, they have a big part of achieving my, my vision. If you could build your company all by yourself, you probably would, but you need people. So those people should be fairly compensated. Yes. Yeah, I see you nodding. Because uh, that's, yeah. that's the first question I was going yeah. to ask. Okay. I was going to ask what, what practical ways or resources, especially yes. for small businesses, like we we'll always see why start up, why start up. <laughs> <laughs> but to be very honest, right, see, I talked about, I like when she talked about collaboration. Look at ways when we had the December retreat. See how everybody, it just helped everyone to just, you know, ease in. I mean, last week Saturday was another <laughs> blissful time. So we you know, money. <laughs> <laughs> we, we spent our money, we had Chinese, you know, it was a very great time. But apart from the food and everything, you could tell that the it, bond, it, it, it's very necessary. I keep saying this to people, right? So even in my small teams, I try as much as possible to. Just three of us, four of us. Sometimes, yeah. oh, let's just let's have lunch. Or when I, I get to the office, I start to get us lunch. I just get lunch for everybody. It's not as if I have all the money in the world. But just so that they also... So there is no time that I will call them to do something that they will, that not. They will not want to do. They yeah. will be so willing. As a matter of fact, they wanted to yank from one of my team. I was like, ah, no, 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 no. I don't want to put anybody <laughs> on that person's team. Like, because I feel like that's, that's like the best way to, you know, put people together. But then let me also ask, um, are there on any other policies that employers can put in place to actually help improve um, employee wellness? Yes, um, directly on employee wellness every day at work. Things like, who has said it, the space. Space management is important. Some people might not be conscious, but not everybody even knows what's irritating them at work. Hmm. You don't even know what's making you, there are triggers that we don't know. You know, don't forget that our childhood experiences have mm. enforced different things in us. Those that grew up in small spaces and those that grew up, you know, with six people in one room, all those things affect you as you grow. So building a space that is well-being friendly. And the architects are doing that now. I have a, my friend is an architect and part of the projects they're doing for a lot of companies now is to create spaces that are, that make you feel well. Mm. So that is important. Um, having fresh flowers in the space is, is good. It helps. Nature is always very good to keep us calm, keep us well. So that's a good thing as well. But I think one of the big things, I think I said it last time, lunch breaks. People, know, as bosses knowing their boundaries, allowing their team members enjoy what is due them, which is their lunches. When I worked in the bank, <laughs> I remember then, I just come from London, so I would just um, go out packing my things to go for my one hour lunch. You say, eh? <laughs> Which one hour lunch are you referring to? When you finish eating, 
come back. Mm. It was a rude shock for me because when I worked in the UK, in a not a not a office setting, it was this you know retail space, and everybody respected the hour. If you want to come, if they, if they want you to come back before the one hour, they will beg you because they understand boundaries. So bosses have to understand boundaries as well. Just because you're paying somebody a salary, you don't own them, right? You sign, they sign a contract with you to work eight to five. If they're staying beyond five, you know, they're going to make you extra money. What's the compensation for them? So I was going to ask about this lunch break, right? Yes. In our Nigerian employment right space, yeah. The, from, you know, right from when you are handed that employment mm -hmm. letter. Because again, we're talking wellness of employees, yes. right? Don't you think, what do you think the employees themselves, they need to start to look out for? Because most times, Chinelo was talking about interviews. When you conduct interviews and you ask some of these people, so, you know, is there any question or anything? Yep. They, will ha they, they will hardly tell you anything, you know? So some of us that are, even though we're like startup companies, we're trying to put things in place like pension, soon we'll start to do HMO. the health, health um, yeah. insurance, you know, we're doing their taxes, we're making sure that everything by the books, you know, right, we're trying right. to do that. But not many people would have the, what's it called, the, we use the, their initiative to get to that ask. done. So, so when you are an employee and you're collecting um, a letter, that this is your letter to be accepted into this company to work, what do you need to start to demand for? What do you look out for? And you know how do you ensure? Because again, I don't think when when, you, when I hear you lunch break, I don't think we have those kind of things as a culture. Yeah, we actually, and, and we don't even have it written down. This thing you're talking about, if you go to Dubai, there's a time that everybody, everybody shuts steps down. Out, yes. If you go to uh, what's it called, France, you know, I mean, literally, companies they expect you to go back home. Everybody will go home and like have a lunch, proper lunch with your family on the table, and all of that. We don't have, or have all of these things here, you know. So um, how do we enforce that? You know, how do we start to probably pay attention to it? It would have been nice because you've mentioned Dubai, you've mentioned countries, which means that it's part of their culture, right? The government is aware and it's part of their system. So it's actually illegal to hire someone without certain um, expectations, you know, from the employer to the employee. In our society, it is not the norm. It wasn't the norm. Now, this is the, the norm. Is, is they know what they want and they're asking for it. But I, I think that since we're speaking about employee wellness, there's responsibility on the employer to meet global best practices as best as you can. Setting up a company, you have worked before, maybe, or you have an idea of the kind of space you want to create. That's why I tell. Um, Employers, don't use other people's systems to create your own system, your own culture. And if you use the Nigerian culture, you might not get the best of your employees because it's quite a hard reading, um, you know, hard, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go mindset. So building your company, a startup that wants to attract global investment, you know, then you have to seek out the best practices that happen in these more developed spaces. Mm. And if you go online, you'll see documentation that, you, that can help you to, mm. to make sure. Because the companies I consult for, I, I look at my research, what can we add here? What can, this be, what can you give your team members to you know, boost morale, as you said? And they do that every six months as a review. Not that there's always something new to add, but at least to ensure the ones that have been mentioned mm. are being practiced consistently. Yeah. Uh, yes. we'll call, let's quickly go on a break because I remember I have a friend that does this employee EAP, employee I think assistant program or something. Yeah, yeah. She's a mental psychologist and all of that so she used to do that for different organizations. Oh, right. And some organizations used to pay really as in like pay yeah, attention to build so they it. put them in a retreat. They can check them in a hotel for like three days and all of them will do the training. Yes. You know. Yeah, but let's go on a very short break, right? When we come back from that break, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. If you just tuned in, we're discussing um, managing employee wellness through impactful leadership. And we have with us Tochi Okafo. And you can tell if you've, if you've been watching, the, the conversation is quite, you know, very detailed. Now, please, let's hear 
what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 3463. Let me apologize to people that sent in messages yesterday that we could not take. We apologize. I just remember that I've, I've not begged our people. More than no vex. I mean, so, uh, so well, before we went on a break, right? So that EAP thing, I know that it happens for a lot of organizations. And she made it a point of duty to go to um, uh, um, CEOs, like, you know, right. small businesses and talk to them. So by the time she was done talking to them, a lot of them saw the importance, oh. you know, of engaging oh. her, yes. her, her services, yes. right? So, I, I mean, so... I hear you say global best practices, but um, so in the case where people are not ready to, to do the global best practices, what does right. the NLC, the laws about the Nigerian labor, right? What, what's their responsibility what, or what should be their responsibility? Because I know now, for instance, in the UK where you are, yeah. right? If employers make sure that you guys do those things. Yep. Because they know the repercussion if you are being if they are being it, reported. It be, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. If there's any complaint at all, they know the repercussion. We don't have that here. So how do we manage that? This is now high level government conversation. Because but I, I feel like even we've we've thrived without having certain policies at the governmental level. Now it's about being human first. Like humanity has to always come ahead or at the fore of everything that we do. So I think if companies really want improved bottom lines with happy people, they should seek out services of people that can, like myself, to help them you know, create cultures, wellness-driven cultures that would improve the quality of lives of their people. Guess what? Um, there was a, I got a call last week from a company. They just had their health checks. And more than half the staff had high blood pressure. Jesus. And you know high blood pressure is silent. You don't know you have it until yeah, exactly. you have it. Yeah. So they called me in to do a diet education for, for, the, for the team. Because, again, our Nigerian diet is heavy on carbohydrates and certain things. And many people are not actually moving. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say that some offices are selling So a little, uh, as little as... Walk break, walk breaks, you know, is, is, is important. Leave your desk. I, when I worked in customer service, I think I sat there until the short lunch I used to have. They come back, I'll sit there till, sometimes in the bank till like 10 p.m. Easy. So you're sitting down for eight, seven, nine hours. You know, you're not meant to sit down for more than 45 to one hour per time without getting up and moving for another three, four, five minutes. Blood flow, all that good stuff that your body needs. So as little as having experts come and educate, because also employees can put, employers can put the policies, but the people also have to be knowledgeable about how to also serve themselves. Yeah, when they it's see a two-way the thing. So yes. somebody needs to show them the benefits of some of these things. Yes. Ginello, you wanted to come in? <laughs> yeah. I think I was just currently listening to her talking about, <laughs> you know, taking those. I, to be honest, right, it used to happen to me that I would sit through, actually after I stopped teaching, I mean teaching, there's a whole lot of moving around. Mm -hmm. so when I started to work in a proper office, I would sit at my desk for three hours, four hours without moving. I just realized sometimes I'll just experience serious brain freeze. I don't know what to do anymore. And I've just, I'll just lose my time that day. And then mm -hmm. I started to practice the Pomodoro technique. So what I would do is I would work maybe 30, 35, 40 minutes. I do a lot of brain work. And I stand up and I go around and I disturb people for another 10, 15 yes. minutes. And I come back to my desk. And I realize that, okay, this thing is actually working, it, yes. working for me. It does. But yeah, that being said, uh, I'm going to, I don't know if this has to do employee wellness, but I think so. So let me use myself as an example. So right now I'm doing business development. Right. But I also have um, interest in, I mean, other walks of life. Right. right. And sometimes I might want to take a training right that you know involves something or you know and there are times when you no know, like it's not particularly disturbing the output of my work or right. disturbing whatever it is that i'm doing at work but i've i've seen some organizations where the employers don't encourage you to do anything else that will develop yourself right right so i mean what do you have to do today? it's funny on my list of things is capacity building like it has to be embedded as the culture of a company uh, wellness is intellectual as well Helping your team improve their intellectual capacity is part of the process. If you want a team that would constantly deliver high-level service, high-level quality work, then they can't use the same knowledge of two, three years ago. You have to allow them. 
I guess the, the challenge might now be if you're doing something that they feel is you stepping, like planning to disappear and leave the company. So I, ha I also have to tell employ employees to respect the company's time. If you're doing personal development, it is personal, not on the company's time. So, but for the employers, companies, uh, they should make room for capacity building for their team members. So in your case, are you the one taking the training for yourself? Yes, it's personal development. Okay, so personal time, not during... So, yes. Let, yes, yeah, not let, let me also hours. include it. So how about running your own business, running your own small business that is outside, so there's no conflict of interest yes. whatsoever? But I know employers who do not encourage you to do yeah. so. I, I think it, same thing. If you're not running your own business in the time that you have signed a contract dedicatedly to a company, I don't think that anyone should have an issue. But if you're stealing time from your employ, employer, then I, I would think that's a breach. God is watching you. God is watching. <laughs> that's a breach. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was even going to say that I remember a friend of mine that worked in the bank for years. Like, so she, was, she then started a bridal business. I mean, today is very successful. It's huge. Right. At some point, she literally had to move the business to the east because, you know, there was always like monitoring. Because, you know, mm. she's a marketer, so they believe that she goes. When she leaves the office, she, she goes, goes there. Her, but, I mean, but she's a very, very, like, you know, those high flyers, actually right. very driven. So she delivers her, her quota um, at the office. Yeah, her yes. targets and all of that. But it was still a conflict for her. She had to move. You know, at some point, she just decided, you know what, I'm resigning. And right. now she now faced her business, you know, oh, squarely, and she's, and she's doing very well. Um, so let, let me come back. <laughs> let me come back to the. I think I'd like to differentiate quickly, yeah, quickly between intellectual growth and start a new business. It's two different things. So if you're learning a skill that is, you know, not a business, I don't mm -hmm. think companies actually mind. It's more of you're setting up shop. We know you are going to leave at some point. They panic more. Yeah, that, but that. even if they leave, right? I know we are talking emplo employer, I mean employee wellness. Yes. Even if they have to leave, shouldn't the employee, I mean employer be ready? Because for me, truly, eh, there's, I, the way I see life, right. right, I don't believe that there's anybody that is, you know, indispensable. Oh, no, absolutely. Because if you, take, if you take that approach, right, it will be easier to let go. Because I know that, yes, you have very, very great staff, right? Yep. Some of them are, like, very amazing. They help you think. But putting in... Um, um, structures would also help, regardless of either if they're there or not. Or not. In fact, we still had that conversation today yeah. when we had a team meeting. Like, even if you're here or not, you, your work should. should be structured in a way that if anybody comes, it's plug and they play. They can just plug in. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, I don't have a problem with an employee growth. I actually look forward to people growing. Right. right? Because, again, growth for them means that, okay, yes, we've also done a good job. Yes. But at the same time, um, I think it's just my, everything at the end of the day is management. Management, you know? yeah. How you manage and everybody. And respecting the boundaries of your... Of yeah. your... I have one, one, one person like that in my team. <laughs> they never even announce the public holiday <laughs> finish. She does send mail. Please look. I'm not coming tomorrow. She does not spare any public holiday. <laughs> Note that there's no going to be public holiday. X, Y. I say, yeah. When I see the mail like that, I just say, okay, oh. You know? I mean, um, just speaking to what Chinelo said, the generation that is coming up right now, mm -hmm. these gens, or more, mm -hmm. they know they take prisoners. They don't. Right? Um, so as an employee, I mean, sorry, as an employer, how do you manage such employees? Because, again, it, it seems like, you know, they just have it. This is what they want. They have to get it the way they want. You know. So if you say, okay, yes, you want to really, you know, make sure that there's a balance, you know, right. in their wellness, right. again, how do you manage such, you know, employees? So first of all, I don't think all of them are like that. Ah, <laughs> but there are many. Oh. But I, I know <laughs> that it's important to recognize <laughs> times and seasons. Mm. Things are changing. The way wealth, life is even curated and created has transformed. Mm. So they're, they're, they're born in a, in a different time. Mm. Um, Again, with every empl employee you hire, you want to make sure that there is value being brought to the table because you're hiring for the purpose of growth. So you, you as a, a part of your own wellness strategy is to be able to look away from, look away, as they say, from <laughs> some things as long as the value that the person brings to the table adds value to your organization. That should be the most of your concern. Mm. 
So you had you said you had a list. Have you have you have we so run through all that list? No, Let's the, go the third one. Time, yeah. yeah, the third one was well being outside of work. Hmm. So I, I also know that it's important to know a little bit about the lives of your employees. The personal lives. Yes, okay. a little bit. If someone loses a loved one, you know, they need time. There needs to be grief periods for people. Things as little as that will really go a long way. Mm. So because just the, think of yourself as the employer, employer, employer. When you are stressed out with maybe if you're, you have a partner or your kids are sick, how do you feel at work? Do you feel like showing up at the office? You don't. And you have people that have families, that have parents, that have all these relationships outside of work, even having their own goals and dreams beyond your place of work. Mm. So a little bit of care outside. But wait, how can we differentiate this? It's called dog and <laughs> Because you never talk any sport in my mental health. <laughs> You're affecting my mental health. This, this generation, they <laughs> want to somebody. Oh you know, like, so how do we bal strike that balance? Because... Um, so I get it. Like, like me now, I can be literally going through hell. And I said to my, my people today that don't judge me with work because if you follow my own way, you, will not you, you come can't survive. Side. You understand? <laughs> so literally, I think my own level of tolerance and resilience is quite, quite high. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not your average person. I think right. I even work best. With when there's a lot of you know things that is uh, going on in my in my similar. inside, nobody ever knows. Nobody that knows that yeah. I am you know. So, but, but so how do we uh, how do we now balance it? Because you never told my please, you're affecting my mental <laughs> well-being, my mental health. I'm not the best place. <laughs> yeah. I'm not in the best place right now. Yeah, I can't I, come to work. Kino day. I think that <laughs> the best way is when there is a no, when you notice a mood change, an yeah. actual drop in productivity or in being present questions to be I must say every day how was it like how is everybody mm. doing that would just be too much stress for you but if you notice a significant shift in, in character. character in how they're showing up at the office it's good to care some employers will now use that time to warn you if you don't behave well <laughs> I'll sack you <laughs> it should be a time of you've been good so far you've been what's happening what's happening let's mm. let's have this conversation to see how we can support Are you, you mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, so you said, my own experience no this one is not even this one was, I felt like he was actually prying into my personal life mm. because for whatever reason, I mean, I'm not used to blocking people on my WhatsApp and um, from viewing my WhatsApp status. It was then I now learned to start blocking people. He would view my WhatsApp status. I would go out, you know, weekend and whatnot, I would post videos. Then I'll come to work on Monday. This thing is not affecting my productivity or anything, but at the slightest instant, he'll now say, that's why you went party. Hey. Mm. And that, like, that's not, you see, what's when, you, when you show genuine care, the person knows his care, and that person was obviously not showing care. <laughs> Let's continue on that yeah. really quickly. So again, you mentioned something about TGIF. I, I want to say that mental well-being is beyond short-term interventions. Whilst those things are great, there are things that we must do, like space, you know, lunch breaks, um, a culture of openness, allowing people to express themselves, those things are actually more important because they serve a longer value than the, the short term. So most companies want to say, oh, let's go for a retreat. Whilst that is good, if they go for a retreat and come back to the same toxic culture, nothing has really mm. changed. So we should be looking at you more... You open-minded. It's not easy sometimes. So. It's not when easy. They, when they are giving you that feedback, you don't... You have to say, mm, mm. okay, I will sack you. <laughs> I will it's not you. easy, but, but I, I think... So I think what is really helping me is because I have been through um, uh, mind, uh, psychological kind of like training. Training, yes. So I'm able to read, you know, even though I don't talk much, right? If you ask me to break down the character of everyone that have crossed my path, I can break it down for you. To the, even the person who agreed, ah, you didn't make that mistake. But um, because I think I've learned also to see less of people's weaknesses and see more of their strengths. It helps me to just, you know, balance my mental sanity. But you know sanity. you can teach that to your team. I try to. I try because to. It helps but sometimes when, when I talk, yeah. Yeah. When people can, because you want to help them build resilience. If mm. you experience that you know you have, you know, mm -hmm. a, you know healthy resilience um, threshold, you can share, you can teach as mm. well. Because it would help. Mm. That mental side of life, which most people want to avoid, is critical. You know, affects your perspective, your perception, and that is what really creates your yeah. decision. Because we don't see life as it is; we mm -hmm. see it from our own lenses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if mm -hmm. we're fixing the lens, which is the mindset, we're going to constantly be evolving 
and mm -hmm. seeing life, you know, a bit more objectively than, than would ordinary. But are we really open to that here? Because I think like a lot of employer, uh, employers, employers rather, they're very locked up, right? They, you can't, you can't be free. You can't talk. You know, even though I try as much as possible, you know, to allow yes, everybody say what's on your what mind. You, you know, myself, I'll tell you what's on my own mind. <laughs> you know, but at least to some extent, I don't think I have. There's anything you can tell me that will shock me. Yes, right. You know, because first of all, I I think I know where you are coming from before you even before you even land. But a lot of employers are actually locked up. Like they're quite um. They're quite rigid, so it's, it's difficult because, trust me, this thing we're talking about, it seems like a, we're just being making light of it. A lot of people have committed suicide. A lot of people yes. have said, you know what, I'm done, I'm not right. doing it again, you know, not because they have another job, but I'm just tired of this the place, right? So, and, and we build toxicity even without even knowing, oh, right? Yeah, sure. So, and that's why for me, somebody like me, I don't encourage gossip because that is one of the biggest avenues to build a lot of a very toxic environment it where... Is. Somebody pulls somebody aside and just, you know, if, if there's a problem, address it and trash it there and then. And the, the thing is done. You know, it is when you do all those secrecy and you start to do side talks and all of that, you keep on building. And that habit, once it starts in an organization, is going to be very difficult for it to be broken it's down. A, it's right? not, it's not a very you know, so, so, so how do we, how do we s switch, you know, because you, you started from the foundation, which is changing the mindset. Yeah. How do we switch you know, employers to begin to see that this thing is not even just because you want your business, you know, to grow. Yes. It is also for the, your own sanity and the sanity of your yes. your team. How do we start to switch that? I mindset? would recommend that employers take training, mental health training, personal development training seriously. I know when I send my pitches to companies, they say, ah, we're on this training. So I expensive. Think, we don't need it. It's too expensive. <laughs> we're going to do customer service so they can bring more money. But a person that will deliver a good customer service has to be healthy in their mind and spirit as well. So mm. I believe that if employers were to spend that extra money to hire people like myself to educate their team members and themselves, they would have a more healthy environment. And everybody needs a healthy work environment, Absolutely. both employer and employee. All right. So let's um, take some comments. It says, interesting discussion on employee wellness through impactful leadership. I believe if employers want full result, they should put employees first before the work mm. and not the work before, before the employees. If your employees are healthy and work is health, uh, and work in, an, in a healthy environment, you will surely get full result from them. Leadership must show it cares. Human beings are not machines. Yep. Even sometimes machines get tired. Yes, they break down. And well, this is yes, from so. Sanctus. Thank you, Sanctus. Go ahead, Chinua. All right, good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what I see in hashtag ways. In a nutshell, your guest made mention of three things that are very important. She said that there should be fair financial compensation. People should be made to understand that the country is bad and tough, no longer like before. She said that every member of staff is a team member, which I agree. And also space management is vital and should not be ignored. Craig Daniel was really listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the foolish man who sold his three children for 1.5 million naira, he should be made to face the music for crying out loud. If you do not have plans for welfare of your children, don't bring them to this world. Mm -hmm. Not a do die affair. And this is from Daniel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Daniel. So in wrapping it up, right, um, start a good place to start would also bring in consultants like you yes. to the environment and you come to see and all of that. Uh, is, is it is it such a huge budget? It actually isn't. Okay. It really isn't. There, there's several interventions you can seek out. Like for the company now that half the team has high blood pressure, immediately the diet and well edu edu uh, fitness education that they need. Also, you have to diagnose companies based mm. on what the employer believes is a problem mm. or um, sometimes they allow us to come sit in for a couple of days, see what is happening, and pick up things that they can work on. On your own. Yes, because sometimes you might, you might, you might miss it. You but that time you come to pretend, how are you chilling? How is everything? No, I will switch. <laughs> I will just switch. Know, like, it's, you, know, you, do it, you don't have to know who I am. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah, the mystery shopper. No, but the employer shopper. knows now. Nah. Only the, the mystery shop, now. This mystery shopper. <laughs> even the employer should not even know. But the employer, if he wants his company to work, he better act well. Actually. <laughs> Even the employer, no, you, will, you will actually get a sense. Because the employer will say, what's making yes, I know. this, this one? Looking at the guy is too nice. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you can tell that he's pretending. Oh. But thank you so much, yes. Tochi. Always a pleasure uh, always, to have you. We are always. going to bring this conversation more. But even me right now, I need meta a bit. <laughs> thank thank you. Conversation. Very it important. Is. Very important. And thank you to everyone that dropped in their comments. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all social media handles that way show Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. I think a conversation we need to have is the approach to financial difficulty in business. So maybe okay. you should keep that topic Th in okay, your head. I'll keep it, okay. So how do you approach your employees when there is financial, financial meltdown mm. in your, in your yeah, organization? Sometimes. So please, let's have that conversation. I actually have real case studies for that. Fantastic. Yes. So if you missed our quote today, here it is again. We are embedding health and well-being at the heart of our business strategy because our people are our greatest asset and we recognize that a healthy, happy, and committed workforce is vital to our business success. We'll see you guys live on Monday as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.